Oh, hi. Whoa. Okay. Zoom in. <clears throat> Howdy. All right. We're uh, we're here today with uh, Mr. Neil Rampersad from uh, the Bike Shed Cafe and Technology Geek and Fitness Junkie and all that good stuff. Yeah. So thanks for doing this. Uh, we're in the the pilot today because we're and I'm wearing ridiculous sunglasses because <laughs> I'm, awesome. uh, I'm an MC in a wedding party <laughs> for my buddy Keith Blackwood. So uh, big day for Keith. What up, Keith? Go get her done. Uh, so yeah, thanks for doing this, dude. Oh, thank you, man. This is episode like number twenty three, I think. So I just realized it's I'm in a car. I'm in a car. Oh my gosh! I like this morning. I'm like, oh my god! I just got, I got it. <laughs> you feel like kind of dumb, right? When you like, I I'm in a car. I am like Intrigue Media. There he is. <laughs> I am in a car. It's very simple. And uh, sometimes we have a tendency to overthink stuff, like everything in life, right? That is the truth. Yeah. So um, you're doing a a talk on Tuesday. I am. And as part of uh, this presentation, it's called Lead Yourself. We're mm -hmm. doing it in Guelph. Um, I'm taking the speakers around and going for a drive and doing I'm in a car. Uh, what's uh, what's your talk on? Oh, uh, waiting for the per or perfect timing it's called. Awesome. So you know the perfect moment, uh, waiting for, we're always waiting, you know, and that's what I, that's what I'm going to be talking about. Beautiful. So let's, let's dig into that in a quick second. So before we get into it, can you give everybody just a quick intro history Cole's notes on on Neil and kind of what you've been up to and what you're up to now oh man so I'm a professional engineer uh, you know I went to university did the whole engineering thing got the ring got the ring so now you can open Corona's <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I don't hurt myself <laughs> anyways I ended up uh, where I worked for a small company some passionate people I got lots of experience and then from the small company I worked for two large corporations um, I worked from operations into uh, sales, so I've been a professional salesperson for the last eight years. Very cool. Um, and then out of that, ex out of the the corporate experience, I've I've, you know, over the last, I'd say in sales you have to learn a lot about yourself, and you have to be willing to push yourself outside of your comfort zone, um, in order to be successful. And that was uh, I was a kid that never made eye contact with people. I was afraid to have a voice. I was afraid to be alive. To be honest with you crazy I know and then that's um, definitely not the Neil I know well right and so that's like the venture within is the way that you sh start showing up differently in the world and ultimately what started happening is um, you know I went down the entrepreneurial path and I said you know if if I could do something for ourselves like my wife and I what would it be and what would that look like and yeah we hatched out this idea called the bike shed and it's become a reality and it's through that process right now and I still have a corporate job don't get me wrong um, I'm, I'm very much involved in the technology sector and sales and that stuff um, but I've aligned the people that I'm around very deliberately so it's very intentional and the entrepreneurial thing is a, is a part of my journey now right epic um, we also own rental property I own a laundromat <laughs> which is not so good and we got two kids yeah right um, and you know, I always hear people say that you don't have enough time, right? And I don't know, I laugh, right? I mean, if nobody has time, it's you. <laughs> and here you on a Saturday morning, right. taking a drive in a so, car. But what's what's your commitment to yourself, right? And what's what do you what are you committed to? And we're just oh gosh, this is just supposed to be a Coles Notes version of myself. Whatever, we're getting into it. This is perfect, dude. It's really funny you say that because in a, in a world where we're all pressured for time, I have a little thing in my signature that says because everybody has a stupid cliche saying in their sign email signatures, right? Yep. Or a quote from somebody. Yep. And so uh, I don't know who said it, but I, I, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the quote of it. But it's, um, you can't have time if you don't take time. That's so true, right? But but there's no but. There's It's like, and there's stuff I, like I'm, de we're deliberate. I feel like you're deliberate about your time as well, right? And Big time about the people we spend it with, about the, the stuff that we absorb into our, our, our senses, right? Our, our eyes, our ears. Um, it's, it's, we can be inundated by all kinds of stuff um, and not, uh, not intentional about it. Right. Or you can also be intentional about the stuff that you, and the people that you're around, right? Big time. <clears throat> so you've, you started the Bike Shed Cafe. Yep. And uh, can you give us a quick little pitch? <laughs> like, what, what is the Bike Shed? Um, so really it's it's a place where I want people to ride their bike again like they did when they were a kid. You remember awesome. when you you rode when you were a kid? 
it was fun, right? You didn't do it for fitness. You just did it because you liked it. To go yeah, with, right. That is how I ride my bike. <laughs> right. So that's really cycling is the only thing that's got me back into wanting to be fit again. I've done the gym thing. It just hasn't worked. So, so the idea is to create that kind of atmosphere. It's kind of a coffee shop. Uh, it's a virtual cycling studio. And I have all the awesome people that I've been able to attract in the last number of years uh, working with me in this project. So I actually don't know what it's going to look like. Yeah. It's starting to evolve on its own. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's fucking, sorry. It's, no, no, swear. It's so, it's so much fun because like we're like... Like this morning I got up and the people are there, they're laughing there. I mean, those were like athletes there, but like regular people come in, they see my little logo and stuff and they're like, oh, you know, this sounds like it could be cool. And it's like cycling specific. I don't know if you see all the cyclists around and they're, you know, sometimes there's this air of like douchebagness and <laughs> you know, it's true, right? So the sp it, it's the spandex. Right. <laughs> but, but like I got into it and then like, I just want to ride, man. Like, yeah, yeah. okay, maybe I don't, Oh, it's car, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they're out there, and I'm like, who are these people? Yeah. And then, but I've been able to find really good people that are into it as well, uh, but that really want to get other people in the sport. So I want to make cycling an activity, and maybe you want to get one of those things, but like, just come try it out. And that's that's really what the bike shed is about. Like, try it out. Maybe there's there's stuff about technology too. So I have a technology theme in there too. And again, the same thing. I want people to come try it out, share their stories. And if it's a place that you get value out of, great. If it's not, then that's, that's okay too. Say la vie. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Cool. So we've basically, we've taken a lot of action to make this thing happen. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, it. well it's been an ongoing project for what, two years? Two years, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Remember, two years. I remember when you came to me um, and you were saying, hey, I got this cool idea. Um, I'd love to talk to you about it. I was like, that's great. Let's like look at the uh, revenue and, <laughs> right. and expenses, right? Because I'm a big believer that if you're doing a business plan, it's got to make sense with, <laughs> with dollars before it makes sense in terms of the strategy. And then it was cool. And like you were so prepared, more prepared than everybody that I talked to about this type of stuff. And then like three days later, you're like, yeah, I just bought a laundromat. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so it's interesting. Can I? Can I... Yeah. Okay. For so sure. the laundromat actually generates income predictably. So that income I'm use I've been using to pay for stuff for this um, the bike shed, and so it's depleted pretty much all my capital. Yeah. Um, to make this thing happen. But, but, it's, the... but it's chunking out cash for you. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And yeah. So you're doing your talk on Tuesday. Yeah. On uh, timing. Yeah. Waiting. Yeah. Can you give us a little snapshot or a glimpse into what that is? Oh gosh, I might get emotional here. Um, <clears throat> fuck, man. I waited my whole life for. <laughs> it's all good, dude. <laughs> I waited my whole life to have a voice. You know, I thought. I thought. I don't know what I thought had to happen for me to feel confident enough to have my own voice, right? Um, and you know, it's funny when you meet people, they, they meet you and they see something inside of you that you don't see inside yourself. Right. Um, but you know, it's for me, my first moment, you know, it was, it was puberty. It was then, okay, maybe when I turn 18, maybe I'll be important then. Maybe when I become a mechanical engineer, maybe when I become a professional engineer, maybe I'll get a project management designation. Maybe I'll hit my quota like, you know, four or five times in a row. Maybe I'll make a hundred K. Maybe I'll make millions of dollars for people. But like it keeps, it keeps going. And then next thing you know, you're in your thirties, right? You have kids and then the kids are looking at you. They're not listening to you. They're watching you. They're watching who you show up as, right? And who, who do you allow to take your time? Who do you allow to abuse you, right? My daughter always asked me like, you know, for a number of years, why, you know, I'd come home, why are you sad daddy, right? And I'm like, I hate the people I work with, right? And it's not everybody. So if you worked with me, I'm, you know, we're, we're good. <laughs> yeah. But but I didn't like I didn't like the person I was I was showing up as, right? Yeah, and my yeah. kids my kids saw that. Crazy. And people see that, right? And then people see you deteriorate, and then you get old, and it's like, man. And then I see people die. Crazy. I've seen people like get sick at or in our thirties, right? I'm sure you have too, right? And yeah, it's like, well, good. like. Like there's this illusion of oh well, we'll wait till retirement oh well how many RSPs do you need and it's never enough money to be honest with you okay you just it just it just fuck life gets out of control 
right? Yeah. And if you allow it to do that. And I just, you know, we, we had our house. People were like, okay, well, we had to sell our house. I had to move the kids. I, ha I quit my job at Christmas. Like, I... I <laughs> I, I have a video. You, you jumped off a cliff, right? But but who's? But what do you do? Do you do? You, do you stand for yourself or not? And like you were given a life, and you live in Canada, you're living one of the greatest places on the planet Earth, man. And like like, and I have this thing in my gut that it's like I had like, and I had all these talents for like I'm I was. I'll share that stuff at the talk, but like I had all these, I had every tool that I needed, like when I came here, when I was like five or six years old, right? Right, and I didn't have to wait for all these things to happen before I had to fall in love with myself, right? You know, it's it's really interesting. <clears throat> um, at injury, we talk about IR theory, okay, identity role theory, uh -huh. and how in our society we place all this value on ourselves by how we perform in our roles, right? And as children, if you get a good grade, you're a good kid. If you score a touchdown, you're a good kid. If you make a big save, you're a good kid. So your role performance gets tied to your self-worth. And I think it's really neat how you explained that because you were talking about all these role performance achievements yeah. to create a sense of self-worth. But the reality is when you were five, you had all the tools to have a lot of self-worth. And I, I think that message can't be said enough. You yeah. know, for everybody out there that it doesn't matter how we perform in a role. Like if our role performance had anything to do with our self-worth, when I learned to play hockey when I was like 22 years old <laughs> and like was like Bambi on ice, uh, I would have felt like I was nobody because I sucked so bad. And not to say I'm much better. I mean, I can still, I can skate a little bit now, but it has nothing to do with my self-worth. Right. Nothing. And that's, that's, <clears throat> it's been interesting. So I've, I've, I've had the privilege of spending a lot of time with like awesome people and you know it doesn't even matter what people are doing to be honest with you it's just it's just when they're willing to show up as themselves as authentic as they are they create so much value for for me for example because I see them I see them as they are they don't hide who they are they're just and you know like I there's people that it doesn't even matter what the business is it's it's just so cool to be around people like that they inspire me cool man and that's I have a million examples I can give of when it was like I met my wife on the go bus right seriously awesome but like it's about letting go and letting life happen with some intention um, instead of like trying you try so hard and you work so hard and your body stiffens up and nothing works and everything kind of just you get punched in the face hard right right the universe is shouting at you to 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 listen to your heart because there is a message in there for all of us and it's a unique message and we all bring that to the table and that's that's really what i want people to understand awesome dude well thank you for doing this <laughs> thank you that was an inspiring talk i'd say that was probably one of the best interviews we've had hands down oh, thanks well, thank you for doing it <laughs> all right guys thanks a lot thanks neil